Okay, so it's 11 now. Let's get started. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Let's start with some instructions about myself. So my name is Tio Shen Kang. I teach computer engineering courses in FICT. So I've been working in education for about 11 years. So I'm also a maker who like to build embedded system applications. So this talk will give you an exploration of technology rather than very technical topic. So I will try to explain at the comfort level. Hope you all can get some inspiration from this talk because sometimes you will feel lost when come to select the program you want to study. So this feeling is like when you try to balance yourself with both of your arms stretched wide and standing with one of your legs lifted up. You won't fall and you feel confidence to balance it with your eyes open. However, when you try to close your eyes and your vision is taken away, <clears throat> you will start to shake and unable to balance yourself. So when you open your eyes again and your back and your vision is back, you can balance yourself perfectly. So believe it or not, you can try it later. Okay. So I hope this talk can give you the visions and direction in choosing the program you want. So today is a weekend, so this talk wouldn't take too long. Sit back and relax. Okay, so moving on, let's look at today's plans. This talk will Start with what is Internet of Things, followed by why do we need Internet of Things, how IoT drives connected home, what is Raspberry Pi, and I will show you the actual connected home demonstration video. Lastly, a short Kahoot section to see whether you take something back from this talk or not. So let's start with what is Internet of Things. To help you understand what is Internet of Things, let's look at an example of a mobile phone first. So our mobile phone has adaptive brightness, which get adjusted based on the light falling on it. It has face detections with identifying who is the user. It has voice recognitions. It has GPS tracking, and it also has mobile gyroscope. So there are a lot of other features that are previewed on the mobile, and most of them can interact with each other. Let's say based on GPS locations, <clears throat> the mobile brightness could be adjusted or based on the phone gyroscope, the screen can be adjusted as well. So when these features come together, right, it can bring in a better system rather than it function individually. So that's what Internet of Things is. Basically, it's a platform where we can connect daily things which are embedded with software and sensor to the internet and this in turn enable them to collect and exchange data between them. So these daily things, right, can be everyday things. <clears throat> Let's say I have an internet platform where I can connect these things. I take the example of my house. I can connect my icon. I can connect my lock. I can connect my light. And all these can be managed on the same platform. So since I have a platform, so I can also connect my car to keep track of the fuels, tire pressure, and location of the car. Since all of these things can communicate with each other, right? The system can be even smarter as I would like to have my house light turns on when I'm coming home late at night and I'm one minute away from the house. So I know need to enter the house in the complete darkness and searching for the light switches. So this is something that is definitely possible through Internet of Things. So moving forward, let's try to understand why do we need Internet of Things. Now to help you understand why, let's look at an example. There is elders at home and the, you are required to work in the office as usual, okay? However, you are worried about your parents as they are very old and ages and could have some emergency that is unable to reach you. So the Internet of Things application can help to monitor your parents by connecting both into the internet platform. So when there is an emergency issue happen, for example, fall down to the floor and are unable to stand up, the mobile application can send you an alert so that you can quickly return home. So this is something is possible through Internet of Things. Okay, let's look okay, at one more example. Why do we need Internet of Things? There is a patient at home and he's on constant life support where his status is being monitored and checked to a health monitoring system. Let's say at some certain point, there is some irregularity <clears throat> with, his, uh, with his heartbeat. What happens is since the system on the cloud is connected to the hospital, hospital can dispatch an ambulance immediately to bring the patient back to the hospital. So while waiting for the ambulance to return, hospital already have everything on hand. For example, patient report, doctors on standby, medicine and operation theater as well. 
this indeed can reduce a lot of effort and time when compared to a normal situa situation. In normal situations, you need to request for an ambulance. When the patient is back to the hospital, then again, there needs to be a lot of checking that needs to be done because doctors are not fully aware. Hence, this leads to a lot of delay before the patient gets treated. So if a system can do this, then this is exactly where our future lies in. So Internet of Things basically is expanding the interdependence of human, that is to interact, contribute, and collaborate to things. What do I mean by interdependence of human is how we depend on each other. I know this sounds a bit complicated, but let's understand this with an example. So as a student, right, you need to submit an assignment report to your lecturer to review. If there is any changes, lecturer will feedback to you and communicate back to you. It, it will take multiple iterations and in this manner, right, a report with less mistake is created. So similarly, a room temperature sensor caters the data and send across the network and then this data can be used by multiple devices, for example, your refrigerator, aircon to adjust its temperature. So this is how devices can interact, contribute and collaborate. If we can expand this interdependence to interact, contribute, and collaborate with the things around us, right? Then we will be building a proper Internet of Things environment which will be much more safer, secure, effortless, and time-saving. So I hope now you would have an idea of what Internet of Things really is. So moving on, now you already know what is Internet of Things, right? Let's take a very quick look or not very technical look at this uh, Internet of Things architecture. So there are four important layers when we are working with Internet of Things, and we can begin with the bottom up. In the first layer, right, the bottom layer, we have the sensing layer where you have your sensor, actuator, which can actually sense something. For example, you might have a gas leakage detector, you might have a camera which, which can pick up motion. All of these things in the sensing layer have one specific task that they can do. To make them communicate with each other, right, you need an important layer, which is the second layer, which is the network layer. It can be Wi-Fi, it can be Bluetooth, and even mobile internet. So before the data starting to fry around between them, right, it needs to be processed in the data processing layer, which is the third layer. And this layer is considered to be the heart of an Internet of Things device because it will take all the information from the sensing layer and process it by making use of a CPU. GPU and even a Raspberry Pi. So coming to the application layer is basically the usage of everything that been done in the previous three layer. In other words, you can use a cloud dashboard to visualize your data or view the data and control the actuator through mobile phone and so on. So I will show you later how does it look like. Okay, so moving on, let's look at the applications of IoT in everyday life. So consider a home appliance such as your aircon. What we always do is we, is we go home, you turn on the aircon and wait for it to reach a temperature that you like. So does anyone see a problem here? Okay, every again, so we have an aircon, then when we go home, we turn on the aircon and wait for it to reach a temperature you like. So anyone see a problem here? No one? Because that's probably because there is no problem here. Okay, this is a perfectly functional setting, but what if it could be better? Okay, what if it could be better? What if if your car was five minutes away from the house and your AC received a message? What if the aircon is connected to the cloud, which has all the relevant information like the location of the car, the outside temperature, and also your favorite aircon temperature? Your aircon could then turn on, then before you arrive and create an ambient that you like. Okay, would that be great? Okay, so this is an example of the IOD in everyday life. Okay, it's actually happening now. Okay, so next. Okay, let's see how IOD drive the connected home. Okay, so I'm done for the introduction of IOD. Let's see how this IOD drive the connected home. Okay, so connected home can be defined as a houses with smart devices connected to internet. Connected home allow you to remotely control, monitor and secure the house appliance. So I believe, right, everyone here agree that home is the feeling of safety, comfort and love. Therefore, 
If I think your house smarter, right, will provide you with a very peace of mind. Everyone agree with that? Okay. So this is something we like to have. So a connected home system, right, can be something that really makes our life quite easy. It can cut down the power consumption when the light, aircon, home appliances are managed smartly. So you won't be shocked by the electric bill. So there are some, there are also other systems that are part of it as well. For example, door management system, security system, water management system. They, these are the key things that really stand out in the connected home system. The only limitation, right? Okay, I would say the only limitation of the connected home system is our imagination stop. Okay, so the only limitation is our creativity stop or ima imagination stop. So anything you wish to automate, right? can make your life easy, can be part of the connected home as well. Okay, so is this connected home system very difficult or very expensive to build or not? So the answer is no, because of the introductions of Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi today has become so common that you can find across most household as well. Today, it has become one of the most cheapest and common computing device that can be found at almost everywhere. But let's actually go back to understand the ideology which brought Raspberry Pi into development itself. Raspberry Pi basically was bought by the Raspberry Pi foundations to bring the ID back to school where students can learn how to program from scratch. So the main ideology was to take back ID to, to, the, to the basic and make it accessible across every school as well. So the first generation of the Raspberry Pi right, was released in February 2020. So, what? So you might ask, what exactly is this Raspberry Pi? So you might have have heard it before, but you might not know what exactly is it. So let me help you to clarify it. So Raspberry Pi is a series of very small, uh, single board computer which have additional features such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB compatibility, general purpose input output, and so forth. Okay. Basically, it's a very small, low-cost credit size computer, which actually can be plugged into a monitor with a keyboard and mouse. It increased the opportunity for people to explore, learn, and understand how to program as well. The latest version of Raspberry Pi is Raspberry Pi 4, which is released last year, June 2019. So Raspberry Pi basically is a combination of Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, Raspberry Pi is basically is a combination of Raspberry operating system and the word Pi right stand for Python programming language. Before we move forward, right, let me just show you the official Raspberry Pi video so that you can understand the ideology of Raspberry Pi foundations. Okay, so let me bring up the video. is a Raspberry Pi. It's a credit card size computer that costs around £25 designed to teach young people to program and is capable of doing all kinds of wonderful things. Back in the 80s, kids had to learn how to code computers to use them and as a result, these kids grew up with an inbuilt understanding of how computers work. Now, we need more programmers than ever before. So to deal with this problem, some clever people came up with the Raspberry Pi to reignite the spark. It runs Linux, a free operating system from an SD card, just like the one in your digital camera, and it's powered by a USB phone charger. You just plug in a mouse and a keyboard, connect it to a TV or monitor, and you're ready to go. In schools, not only is Raspberry Pi a great way to learn programming skills as part of ICT, there are also dozens of cross-curricular applications, like science, yeah. and music. And all over the world, people are experimenting with Raspberry Pis and attending Raspberry Jam events, where people of all ages are learning what can be done with a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Since the first Raspberry Pi was shipped, we've seen examples of people using the Pi in a variety of amazing and interesting projects. Taking advantage of its size, portability, 
cost, programmability, and connectability. So whether you want to learn to make games, build robots, or even teach a bear to parachute with Raspberry Pi, the sky's the limit. Okay, so I hope you guys had a great learning experience from the video. So that was basically the ideology of the Raspberry Pi Foundations on introducing Raspberry Pi into the market. So moving on, let's see the historical journey of Raspberry Pi. As I mentioned just now, right, the first version of Raspberry Pi was released in 2020. And since then, it keep evolved in these eight years and come to the latest versions, which is Raspberry Pi 4. For, example, for every evolution, a lot of features are added. However, there is one thing, right, that has never changed since its release. So can you guess what is it? Okay, so the answer is, is the price. Okay, the selling price for the first version of the Raspberry Pi is 35 US dollar. And it also sells the same price, right, at the latest version, even though the processor power is increased, memory size is increased, and many components are integrated into it. Okay. So moving on, let's look at what are the capability of the Raspberry Pi that you can actually harvest from. So first of all, it enables you to browse the internet and watch high definition video on the same device. Apart from that, right, you can also do coding and debugging using Python programming language. Okay, to design your favorite applications. It also has add-on capability like infrared camera and security, which can be built keeping Raspberry Pi as a core hardware with that sensing technology also can be built around raspberry pi as it has an easy and straightforward sensor interfacing libraries so last but not least right it has a huge set of games which can be played on raspberry pi okay for example final fantasy 7 original yes i'm not joking you can actually play it on raspberry pi okay if, if you want to try it you can buy a raspberry pi then try to install it then you can actually play it okay so as I mentioned before, right, in the previous slide, Raspberry Pi basically is the combination of Raspberry operating system and Python programming language. So, so let's look at what is the recommended OS used for Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation provides and recommends the use of Raspbian, a Linux-based operating system as primary OS for Raspberry Pi. It is first released in 2013 and has a total of four versions. Okay, with the one with the latest one released in 2019. So it has a special name for each version. So now can you guess what is it? The first version is called VZ, second version is called JC, third is called Scratch, and fourth is called Buster. Okay, so this any this is this any of these names ring a bell to you? VZ, JC, Scratch, Buster, did all of these names ring a bell to you? Okay, I think someone already guessed it. Okay, if you like one of the animations. Okay, so this name, right, okay, is actually named after the Toy Story characters. Okay, so the first one, Weezy, is actually is a penguin. I think it's from Toy Story 1. Okay, then Zessie is a little cowboy, okay, with a red head. Okay, Scrat is the purple octopus. Then the Buster, right, is actually is the toy's owner, Pat, which is a dog. Okay, so this, this, uh, there are some special names, uh, they're actually named after the Toy Story characters. Okay, so this is the outlook of the Raspberry Pi. From here, we can see that processor is in the middle. So you can see that perfect square is actually is the processor. So next, I will briefly introduce the hardware in a clockwise manner, starting from the top. Okay, so Raspberry Pi have total of 40 general purpose input and output for you to interface with the sensor. For example, temperature and humidity sensor. Next, it has four USB ports and can be used to connect your keyboard and mouse, your pen drive as well. Okay, next it has the network port for you to connect to a network cable to have internet access. Okay, the things that it didn't show here is actually is an integrated Wi-Fi. Okay, it does have a Wi-Fi, but it didn't show here because it's integrated inside. Okay, so next you can connect your speaker to the audio jack 
Okay, so when you play for the for example the Final Fantasy Seven, you can hear the music. Okay, so you can also connect a Pi camera to it. You can also connect a cam. Uh, so you, you can also connect a monitor through the HDMI port. Okay, so the OS can be displayed on the screen. So it use micro USB to power it up. And lastly, the Raspbian OS, right? I just mentioned, is stored inside the micro SD card and it is slotted underneath the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now I already introduced Intel of Things to you and Raspberry Pi to you all. Let's look at how you can actually build this connected home based on Raspberry Pi. So usually for a connected home system, right, you cannot run away from these three things, which is monitoring, automations, and security. So this is a typical floor plan of uh, Malaysia double-story houses. So let's see where you can actually deploy it. First, the monitoring system. You can actually deploy it at the backyard to monitor the washing machines to see whether it has uh, water leaking or not. So you can deploy at the garden to monitor the, your plant. You can deploy at living room to monitor the environment. So second is the automation system. So you may actually deploy at the garden to help you water your plant. You may actually deploy at the back room to control your aircon. Okay. So lastly, the security system. You can actually deploy at the main door okay, to check whether somebody break into your house or not. So at the window and also at those expensive house appliances. Okay, so at the window, right, somebody want to break into your house, it will knock your window. So you can have some sensor to, to actually sense the vibrations. So it will alert you. Okay, so all these systems, right, are connected to the same network so that they can actually communicate with each other. Okay, so let me just go through very briefly. Okay, what are these sensors needed for this connected home system? Okay, so first of all, the sensor is DHD11. So it is used to sense the surrounding temperature and humidity. So second is a light sensor to sense the surrounding brightness. Third is a water leak sensor. Okay, it's just a DIY sensor that only use wires as a water probe to detect the water leaking from the appliance. So lastly, it's a soil moisture sensor to read the soil moisture level. Okay, so for the automation part, right, the first actuator, okay, is water pump. Okay, so this is not called sensor because it's actually automated. You have something to put into action. So it's called actuator. Okay, so the first actuator is water pump. So this one, right, I actually deploy and set it to trigger at 8 a.m. every day in the morning to help me water my plant. So I know you to wake up so early in the morning and go and water my plant. Okay, so second actuator is the infrared transmitter used to control your aircon. So if you can digitize the aircon remote control, right, you can make you can actually make it even smarter. So the use case, right, I already mentioned just now, okay, when you are five minutes away from the house, the aircon will detect your car is five minutes away, then it will turn on, okay, prior that you reach your house, okay? So it's something that you can do, okay? So let's move on. So lastly is the security part. So the MPU 6050 can be attached to the house appliance or window to sense any motion or vibrations. However, sensor is used together with the magnet, okay, to sense the door opening. So last but not least, a Pi camera can be set up in the house to capture any abnormal uh, scenario. Okay, so we I'm done uh, introduce what is the hardware will be used. Then let's see the software. Okay, I've just used one software only. Okay, so before I show you the demo video, right? Let me introduce the software I use in my connected home system. So the software I use is called Telegram. So it is a cloud-based instant messaging and voice over IP service. So with the bot engine right launched in June 2015, it become a very popular application to communicate with Raspberry Pi because it is so simple to use. So in the middle here, you can see that it's a screenshot of the telegram to check my living room environment. Okay, so how do you check the room, uh, living room environment? So the flow is after you have keyed the command, which is slash DMP, you will send this command through internet back to Raspberry Pi, and then to trigger it to read the sensor and pass back the temperature reading to you. Okay, so show you how simple to code it. Okay, this is just a screenshot of the coding. Okay, so you can see that it only takes about 36 lines of Python code, okay, to actually code this one. It's very simple only. Okay, all right. Let me show you the demo video with my connected home system that I captured. Okay.
Okay, uh, hi everyone. So this is my Raspberry Pi I set up in my living room. I also have uh, another Raspberry Pi set up in my garden. So I will show you what are the things I can do with this Raspberry Pi. So first of all, let me initiate initiate my boot. Okay, so I just press the start button. Okay, so it's respond from this Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I can issue some commands for this uh, Raspberry Pi. For example, I want to check what is my environment in my living room. Okay, so I just need to key in the command living A E N B, which is my living room environment. Okay, so it gives me the readings of my living room is currently 37 uh, degrees Celsius and my the living room humidity is actually 59 percent. Okay, so for this uh, humidity, right? Okay, if the higher the percentage, the higher the humid uh, in the uh, in the environment. Okay, so next I just like I say I have got one uh, uh, Raspberry Pi set up at, at my garden. I can show you that uh, I can also check my garden environment. What are the temperature and humidity? Okay, so I give a command of this uh, uh, garden EMV. So it give me that my currently my garden is actually I uh, have a 32 degrees Celsius, which is higher, which is true because it's out, actually outside, and the humidity is actually quite high. It's uh, about 70 uh, percent. Okay, so. I have one uh, moisture uh, sensor, okay, at, uh, at my uh, at my plants, okay. I also can check what is my moisture level now, okay. So I just issue this command, okay. So um, so the uh, response from Raspberry Pi is say that the soil is wet, which means that uh, the soil is still wet. So I don't need to worry about the uh, whether the plant were out of water or not, okay. So this is the demonstration for the first part. Okay, so this is the second part uh, of these demonstrations. I want to demo that the uh, light sensor. Okay, I have one light sensor in my living room, and so I can check my the brightness of the living room. So let me start the boat. Okay, I got the response from the boat. So I can key in the command to actually check the brightness. So the command will be living brightness. Okay, just key in this one. Okay, so uh, since I'm turning on the uh, the light, so it say that the living room is bright. Oh, right now. Okay, so let me simulate. Uh, uh, if it's turning dark, right? Okay, what are the response you give from the Raspberry Pi? So I'm just going to put my hand here, just just to cover the light sensor. Then I type in the command again. Okay, let's see what it give. Okay, so it say that the living room is dark, which is correct because I cover the light sensor. Okay, so for this part, right? This light sensor, what can you actually apply in the? Uh, uh, how do we do you make it smart? Okay, for example, you actually uh, it's time to bake, it's time to go to sleep, but you forget whether my um, living room I get, I got turned off the light or not. Okay, you can actually use the this uh, application to check whether you got turned off the light or not. So you need to go down check, hey, or it's already turned off, then go go back up to your uh, bedroom again. So it's quite uh, tedious, uh. Okay, so this is the demonstration of the light sensor. Hello everyone, this is the part 3 of the demonstration. So you can see this uh, in the middle is the water pump. Okay, the whole thing so here is the watering system. So the right side here is the uh, Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this whole thing is placed on top of the water tank. Then the whole thing here is connected to the water outlet, which is over here. Okay, so you can see that the middle one is the water outlet and the mid and the thing the sensor actually um, I already slot it in into the Sorry, so this is a moisture sensor. Okay, so for demonstration purpose, right, I will set the timer into 15 seconds. No, usually I will let it water for about 30 sec uh, 2 minutes. Okay, but now for demonstration purpose, I will just set it for 15 seconds. Okay, so when the water pump is activated, I will I can receive the notification from uh, to the telegram. Okay, when the watering system is done, okay, I also will receive the notifications. And also, it will give me whether the soil is wet or dry or not. Okay, so let's wait for the timer is up. Okay, so this is another demonstration of the security system. So, in case for this security system, I actually uh, 
install it at my living room near to the main door so you can see that this is the hot effect sensor this is the main exit over here and this part over here is my main door okay so now uh, let me initialize my boots okay let's start the button okay so now the boot is initialized so by default the uh, system is disarm okay so I can check it by pressing the disarm so it tell me that okay the security system is disarmed so if I open the door now okay so I didn't receive anything because the system is disarmed okay so now let me arm the system okay, pressing this and arm the system okay so the system is armed now then the main door is closed okay, so it tell me that the main door now is closed okay so now let's go to the main screen okay so this is a uh, my uh, home screen okay so if I open the door now so you can see okay it actually sent me the uh, notifications now my door is open okay it will skip on spamming okay for every two seconds okay so now my door is open so let me go close it back first okay so you can see that this is the security system by using hall effect sensor okay so you can see that there are a lot of spam over here Okay, so this is another part of the security demonstrations. So um, this is a setup. Okay, so I just set up this in the living room as well. Okay, so this is a security part. So you can see they have the camera over here. Then this is a MBO6050. This is used to detect any motions or any vibrations. Okay, so uh, the purpose I set out like this, right? Yeah, okay, usually if uh, the thief actually break into the room, right? Okay, they will tend to uh, steal those uh, or grab those expensive things. Okay, so this is one of expensive uh, expensive thing. Okay, so you can guess what it is. Okay, so you can see that in the system is still disarmed. So if I try to move it, okay, so you can look at the phone screens. Okay, it's nothing happened because it's still disarmed. Okay, so when I try to arm it, okay, let's arm it. Okay, so now the system is armed already. So if I try to move this uh, console, right, okay, when I try to move it, then I will receive a notification saying somebody is moving my things. So, so this camera will also take the picture okay usually the camera won't put like this uh, because it's too obvious already but for demonstration purpose I, I put like this okay so now you can see now the system is already up this if i try to move it okay so you can see the screen okay you say that alert intruder detected then they actually capture the picture okay so this is not me lah, okay obviously okay just for demonstration purpose so can you guess why is this guy in the picture is very famous to you all right okay try to guess why is it okay so this is the last part of this uh, demonstration so i will just set up the water leak detections over here so this one is just very simple you have two wires over here okay like a wire probe and this one is connected to the raspberry pi okay so i have the left side over here okay left side over here is actually is the washing machines Okay, so usually uh, where is the water leak, it usually come out from this drainer over here if it, when it stuck. Okay, so this one is just a very simple uh, demonstration. So I'm going to pour water, okay, pour water at this water probe. Then my phone will actually uh, receive the notification say that there's water leaking. Okay, so let's try it. Okay, so as you can see at the phone screen, so it actually notified me that there's a water leaking coming up. Okay, so this is the last part of the demonstrations. Thank you. Okay, so I hope you all enjoy this video. So if you miss out this video, right, you can actually uh, find the link in the live channel. Okay, you can actually replay the video. Okay, so just now I mentioned, right, this connected home system, okay, they have a limitation. There's only one limitation is where your imaginations or your creativity stop. Okay, so let me show you one more video that this guy actually have a very good creativity to actually build his own smart home or connected home. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, so for this video, right, if you like Jelda, then you will like it. Okay, so enjoy.
Okay, so after watch the video, right, you might want to ask where can I start? Okay, what are the skills required for me to actually venture into this IOD journey so that <clears throat> the company will hire me? Okay, so the qualification you need, right, are no different than an IT development or an IT development role, like good in coding and fundamental of object design. So, but the skill you need here, right, are, are more, are way more than that. So, company who engage in IoT technologies are company that are invested in the future. So, they are actually seeking forward-thinking professional. Okay, that not only meets the standard in academics, but also have soft skill and innovative thinking. So, people who can integrate deep knowledge in embedded technologies and the cons and concept of crowd competing and age competing are tips to be most in demand. So next, we have the networking and communication protocol. These are very important as uh, devices need to be connected to each other at all time. So finally, it needs an uh, analytical skill that can convey a complex idea in simple ways. So these are the skills required, okay, if you want to venture into this IoT uh, company, okay, so that they can actually want to hire you. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this is the end of this uh, actually I already introduced the why is the Raspberry Pi. Okay, why is the India of things, and also I already give you through the video. Okay, so let me actually take this opportunity. Okay, to actually help you differentiate between the computer science and computer engineering program. Okay, so for computer science, right, is primarily concerned with computational theory. So namely the architecture, data, algorithm, and programming language that comprise the software that's run on the computer. Okay, so for computer scientists, right, they are focused on things like code, algorithms, artificial intelligence, database design, and software design. So a computer scientist will code the instructions, protocol, and operating system that, write, that run on top of the hardware. So in contrast, right, computer engineering take that theory and apply it to real life. So essentially, it's computer science put into action, married with the field of electrical engineering. So it actually involves designing and prototyping the tiny circuits and processing unit that bridge the computer hardware and component with the software. So the example can be embedded systems, microprocessor, IoT devices, or any other smart things. So hope this can clear some of your doubts. Okay. So lastly, if you are interested to find out more about this computer engineer program, okay, you can actually browse our FSD website with the link provided in the live chat. Okay, so that's basically almost the end of this talk, but let's do a very short code session, shall we? Okay, so let's do a very short code session. Okay, give me a second to bring out the Kahoot. I think if you already joined uh, this IT webinar, right? Okay, you should already know that uh, you are actually quite familiar with this cover already. So let me Okay, so this is the game pin of this Kahoot. Okay, so you just need to take out your phone, then key in the Kahoot.id. Okay, then put the nickname, a key and nine game pin, then put the nickname, then we will start in the minute, in, in the minutes.
Okay, so two more minutes. We will start. We will start at eleven forty-six. Okay. this <laughs> okay okay so 11 46 now okay let's start okay so this uh just have four questions only lah. okay just test your understanding only it's very simple questions okay first let's go let's start Okay, uh, for this one, the answer is actually does not, then which are following is not true about Internet of Things. So if it does not need Internet, internet platform, then it is not called Internet of Things already. Okay, so most of you got it correct. Okay, so next. Okay, good. So, actually, ninety-nine of you got it correct. Yeah, it's construction is not of one of the connected home features, lah. Okay. For oh, this Lala film, I think this guy like Final Fantasy. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Okay, those questions. Okay, yeah. So large size computer is not true about Raspberry Pi, okay? Because Raspberry Pi is just a credit size computer only. Okay, so last questions. So it's a little bit out of topic, but uh, just for fun, okay? For the last questions. Yeah, 
Yeah, so uh, this is just for fun, okay? So that picture is actually uh, is a copy in the detective corner. If you watch the detective corner, every time they show the copies, right, they will be black in color. Then, so this is not a man in black, then this is not a black man coffin, okay? So uh, some of you don't know, it's okay, now you already know what is it, okay? So let's move on. Okay, so I'm actually done all my talk and also go through the cover already. Then also uh, help you to understand why it's a connected home, also show you the demo video. So if you have any questions, you can ask in the live chat now. Okay, so I'll pick a few questions to answer. Okay, so also please help Miss Lee to actually fill out the sign up form and also fill out the evaluation form as well. Okay, if you have any question, you can ask. For Raspberry Pi, is there any internal storage system? No. Okay, the micro SD card is the only storage. Okay, you put you put the OS inside, then the other spaces, right? They are means for internal storage for you to put your code, for you to put your pictures and so on. No, you, can, you cannot put SSD. Okay, but uh, there are some third-party hardware you can actually uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi through USB. Okay, then install the OS in the SSD. You can do that. Okay, but you need a lot of efforts to actually make it work. Any more questions? No? Okay, if there is no more questions, so I hope this talk can give you some inspirations. So if you are interested to become a maker, okay, maker is like would like to build this embedded system. Okay, so come join us the computer engine program. Okay, it's fine that you have general knowledge from the beginning. So, but we can train you to become a hero. Okay, thank you everyone. Hi, uh, this is Miss Lee, the admin for this uh, group. And also we would like to thank to uh, Mr. Teo for the insightful sharing. So and now I would like to announce that please remember to do the sign in and sign uh, the sign out and evaluation form. At the same time, we have few more uh, IT webinar. So I also will attach the link in the chat box. Please uh, feel free to join us. Thank you. Uh, I think I missed one question, which is from Real Sam. I'm not sure Real Sam, uh, you are still there or not. Okay, you asked that I'm trying to connect Raspberry Pi and the Maxbox ITX one sonar sensor with jumper, but this sensor does not have the hole, which you usually see in the breakboard. Okay, I didn't use this sensor before. Okay, sometimes if, if it didn't have a jumper, maybe it need uh, some sort of other communication, for example, using the SQC or the SPI to communicate to it. Okay, so since I not didn't use, I didn't use this before, so uh, this could be the answer to you. Okay.
Oh, you mean this uh, sensor, right? Uh, you say you didn't have jumper, then you need to actually, uh, how to say? Oh, it's actually using serial to communicate. You have a DX and uh, X pin. So you say you didn't have a jumper, right? You need to actually shoulder the header. Okay, you need to shoulder the header so that it, or shoulder wire. Okay, so they can actually interface with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, you can see there are six, I think seven holes. Okay, in this uh sensor. Okay, so it didn't come with the header. Header means that have a pin. Okay, so you need to shoulder the wire. Okay, try your best to shoulder the wire, so they can actually connect to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, when you shoulder the wire, right, you can use those uh uh female to male wire. Okay, so the male head you can shoulder into the sensor, then the female one you can connect to the Raspberry Pi because Raspberry Pi, all the pins they are actually male. Okay, so you need to have a female pin to connect to it. Okay, just do some shouldering work, then you can actually connect already. Okay.